And what's up? welcome in West Metro Chris Clark. It is GC Live. We are back after taking a day off for Memorial Day. After I took a week off from Chris last week, we're both back just in time. Camp season has begun. It will begin on Thursday and on campus in person. Recruiting is officially back as of Tuesday. So plenty to get to, plenty to break down, plenty to talk about. Thanks for joining us. Uh, shout out to everybody that's already in the chat and uh, shout out to everybody that's also listening on the podcast. By the way, we are available on every single podcast platform and on youtube.com slash Gamecock Central on Facebook. If you just search for South Carolina Gamecocks on GamecockCentral.com or on the Twitters at Gamecock Central. So available everywhere. And we are presented by our good friend, Clint Hammond of the Mortgage Network. ClintHammond.com is where you can find his information. 803-771-6933, as you see there in MLS number 71597. Or just shoot him an email, chammond at mortgagenetwork.com. Branch manager over there at the Columbia Mortgage Network right across from Drew High School, our good buddy, Clint Hammond. Appreciate him making this show possible. And this show has no shortage of things to talk about today, Chris, and probably for the next month or so. By the way, the goal right now is um, – so Chris and I will be out at camp Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week. So probably no live show on Friday. But also, those of you who are Carolina baseball fans, I would guess many of you are, we're actually going to have a special show. we got to figure out exactly when we can get it done. But hopefully by Thursday night, I will have recorded a special NCAA a regional preview with Colin Taylor. That will not be a live show, but it will be posted in its entirety Um both on the podcast feed and here on the YouTube feed. So y'all look out for that. Probably going to go ahead and post that hopefully on Thursday night so that y'all can listen to it or watch it leading into the big regional for South Carolina. But for this show, we'll leave most, if not all, the baseball to that. This show will be football recruiting oriented. Chris, it's back. And Chris is frozen. Um, we got you, Chris. You there? All right. Um, I guess we're we're going solo for now. Um, can it, by the way, can everybody else hear me? Can everybody hear me? We good? I need everybody in the chat to give me a thumbs up that y'all can hear me. I think I'm good. I think Chris is having an issue there. But uh, let's try one more time. Let's go out now. Chris Clark, do we got you? I'm um, here. Sorry, I was shooting you a text. I had my internet just decided, boop, just popped off right in the middle of the show there for a second, and then I got it back. Luckily, our internet went out uh, for a few hours the other morning, and so that was a lot of fun, but we're good now. Apologies. I, and I, I've got a lot of, th I said, everybody give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm getting this array of thumbs up. So, yeah. all right, y'all, for, for the podcast, uh, for the podcast version of this, Let's just start over the final sentence. That way I'm, I'm going to chop all that out. Um, again, I am Chris. I am not Chris Clark. I am Wes Mitchell. This is Chris Clark. Here and this is GC Live. And Chris, finally, after nearly 15 months, 14 and a half months, I believe, to be about exact, uh, it was March 13th, 2020, was when recruiting got shut down. So as of Tuesday, recruiting is officially back. Chris Clark. It is back. It's fun. It's exciting. Um, you know, activity on day one for South Carolina, June 1st. Shane Beamer had mentioned that uh, at one of his media opportunities, hey, we want to try to get guys on campus every day. And as we've continued looking over sort of our list, guys of, of West that we're expecting in, there are a few holes. There have been a few holes, but like, Every day they're getting, you know, filled. Like, like there's not many days even right now on June second. This is June second, June second, where you go, okay, there's nobody coming in today or nobody that we know about. And they may get through June with every day or almost every day having someone in. I mean, I just saw Donovan Westmoreland, for example, the game cut commitment coming in on June twelfth. I don't think I had anybody that day. There's one prospect in today, not many guys today. Obviously, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, big camp days. So lots of guys coming in on those days. But 
tons of activity and it's, it's exciting, man. It really is um, to, to have recruiting back. Obviously you think about Shane Beamer's always going back to, Hey, January because of, of some certain, you know, I can't remember that far back in that recruiting calendar. It's been so long. I don't have the dates in front of me in terms of when it was dead and whatnot, but you're right. March 13th is when it went dead. There were some other times in there where it wasn't exactly live in person recruiting. So it's really been, I mean, it's been well over a year. It's been about a year and a half really since there's been substantial or any in-person recruiting activity. So this is a key, key, we've talked about this a lot before, a key time for South Carolina. You've got a brand new staff. You've got a program that has won, what, six games over the past couple of seasons, brand new staff, largely recruiting guys that have never been to campus before. And so you really can't understate how valuable this is. Yeah, it's valuable to every school. Every school that's reopening recruiting is critical for them. But for South Carolina, in my opinion, Wes, even more so. And they've got a nice group of visitors already on the docket. List is going to continue to grow throughout the summer. And no shortage of storylines to track throughout the month of June. Yeah, man, I, I got a feeling they he may actually hit that target of hitting every single day um because if you look like you said man there are a couple of days that right now uh you know maybe there's not a guy penciled in but i mean as we already saw yesterday you're gonna have kids that just happen to be in the area maybe they're riding through to go to another school maybe they're from the area uh, but don't live here anymore they're just gonna be like hey why don't i drop by and i, I think there's there's probably gonna be something going on the coaches sort of have to – they almost have to make themselves available every single day and just be prepared uh, for the possibility of, of somebody dropping in because it, it could happen. It may end up happening, which I, I'm actually – I'm going to track that. We're going to find out if they they hit that target because I, I think it's going to be very, very close um, to every single day in June. So um, let, let's get into a couple of these guys, Chris. You, you look, as we said, June 1 kicked off for South Carolina. They made the decision not to go full camp June 1. Um, get a couple of days, I guess, settled in. They hosted visitors on June 1. First camp, June 3rd, tomorrow, obviously. Again, Chris and I will be out there. We'll be uh, reporting back on Gamecock Central for, for what we see, what we hear, how things are going at the camp, who are some guys that are standing out, who gets new offers. That's a big time for new offers every single year. So, you know, we'll have all that on Gamecock Central. But unofficial visits started on June 1, and it was interesting, Chris. There were two guys we sort of – we found out we knew were coming in. Carson Black, class of 2023 quarterback, Nation Ford High School up in Fort Mill, um, has an offer from the Gamecocks uh, from this new staff. And then Quan Peterson, class of 2022 cornerback from Rock Hill High School – Rock Hill, South Carolina, South Point High School – no offer from South Carolina yet. And those were the, the sort of two guys we already knew the names that were coming in. Then Shane Beamer, who I, I think I think Beamer's sort of probably getting the hold of this whole Twitter thing, like how to use social media to create a little bit of buzz. You can't name guys publicly if you're Shane Beamer. But you can do all but that. You know, right. you can – you can sort of get everybody buzzing, and the, the kid knows you're talking about him. So then uh, Beamer puts out this tweet yesterday. Hey, one of the the, the most big-time prospects in the country happens to be on our campus right now and mm -hmm. gets everybody buzzing uh, about that as well. So a, a third visitor for South Carolina on uh, on Tuesday. Yeah, Heaven Brown Schuler is it Schuler Brown? I think it's Brown Schuler from Atlanta in the 2024 class, and and this is a guy West that we knew South Carolina would be involved with. Um, Columbia ties from Columbia originally. He still has family in the area. Uh, we, he put a video up of him training with former Gamecock and NFL uh, defensive player Corey Miller, uh, who he referred to as his mentor. So there's a tie there. And then obviously when he's in town, we knew that that he would be on campus, that this kid would be on campus at some point this summer. Date wasn't locked in, and it just happened to be day one. So create a little bit of buzz. I mean, is it is it a ways out with him being a 2024 guy? Yeah, but based on offer list, based on potential, um, size, skill set, this kid has a chance to 
when his time comes, be a national level type recruit. And he's already, in fact, gotten a good bit of buzz for his age. And so um, that that's what it's about for South Carolina, man. It's just, yeah, work to do in the 2022 class. There's There's plenty to focus on there. But this is a time in which, because of that long recruiting layoff, because of this staff being brand new together, all recruiting together at the same at this particular school for the first time, um, this is the time, the summer, where you really lay the groundwork with the 2023, the 2024 class. So big news for South Carolina to get him on campus. You're right, Shane Beamer doing a good job, I think, of creating some buzz um, and a visit that seemed from everything we've heard West to go quite well. And Again, very early, but you expect South Carolina to be firmly in the discussion for him uh, going forward. And by the way, has a just an excellent Twitter name. Um, heavy duty, play off of his uh, his name there. Just Good one. excellent, uh, great yes. job there by uh, <laughs> Heaven. And I, you know, I, I think a kid that, um, like you said, man, already just gener- You look at his Twitter profile, and it's like. Um, Under Armour, underclassman, All-American. Adidas, uh, you know, it's it's like just underclassman, All-American after underclassman, All-American designation. So uh, the dude, as far as his listed size, is already like college defensive end sized. So that that, that tells you something, obviously, about the upside there. And uh, a kid that is uh, appears to be very athletic and already has a number of big-time offers, so everybody will be after him. Um, Some of them already are, but by the end, I think a lot of other teams will also be after him. Uh, Again, we knew about Carson Black. We knew about uh, Quan Peterson. Uh, With Peterson, this is something interesting to to take note of, Chris. This is the first year that uh, that South Carolina has been able to – well, that any school, by NCAA rule, can actually work guys out uh, while they're on their campus on a non-camp day. So that was something South Carolina took advantage of on the first was, uh, you know, they had Quan Peterson in. He does not have a South Carolina offer at this point. He does have some other Power 5 offers. Bring him in, put him through a private workout, and, um, you know, camp again starts Thursday. So he's here before camp starts. You can evaluate a guy while you get him in, which I, I think is actually, you know, the NCAA gets a – they get a, a lot wrong. We give them a lot of uh, grief for what they get wrong. But I think they got this one right. Basically, if a kid – happens to make it into to your town. He makes it to your campus. You don't have to be like, well, you got to come back to camp to work out. And you don't have to hide him and try to do some private uh, workout and be like, don't tell anybody that we're like, go, go, go run, go run from that goal line to the 40 yard line. And coach, go over there and, and time how long it takes him. But you're not running a 40 yard dash, yeah, but I'm not yeah, we're not testing you, but so the, the NCAA gets it right here, I, I think, in allowing schools to just go ahead and evaluate guys while they're on their campus. Yeah, and and I mean, again, you got to do something. It's about trying to remedy um, the situation that you had for so long. With, I mean, we we think about well, okay, kids can't take visits for whatever fifteen months or however long it was, but it goes way beyond that. It goes to the fact that college coaches are missing out on evaluation opportunities, not being able to go by schools, eyeball kids, uh, talk to kids, go do in-home visits, go watch their spring practices, go watch their football games last season on the field from field level. You couldn't do that. Kids couldn't come to camp last season. So you're relying uh, the most that schools have ever relied on this uh, in, in years and years. You're relying on kind of imperfect information. Now it's better than it was years and years ago. Um, in terms of some of the, you know, some of the digital stuff, having access, easier access to like huddle film, having access to, you know, kids being able to, we saw kids posting measurements, the picture of the scale, you know, a picture of their, you know, them up against a wall with a, with a tape measure for wingspan and height and all these different things. Yes, those are good. Um, But in some cases you want to be able to eyeball a kid, see if you can coach him. Uh, face-to-face in a camp setting. You want to see him in his spring practice, assess how how coachable he is, and couldn't do that. And so I think a lot of, you know, colleges were were relying on imperfect information to take kids or to make decisions on them. Uh, Kids, on on the other side, were not able to make informed decisions in a lot of cases in the last recruiting cycle. And so 
The 2022 class, fortunate for them, they, they've they gotten a very late jump in terms of in-person contact, but they at least do have the summer where they can take official visits, unofficial visits, camps, and kind of play catch up. And then the 23, 24 classes, they'll be in okay shape. But I, I think this was a good rule uh, to, to allow, like you said, Wes, uh, colleges to be able to get a better look at a kid and kind of kind of substitute that um, in, in a non-camp setting. So it was definitely a good rule. And I think helps alleviate a little bit of that issue with, with being able to see some guys in, in person. Yeah. So uh, the other kid, Carson Black, we have not, hopefully by the time you hear this later on, if you're listening on the podcast, we will have talked to him. We have not had a chance to dive in with a full interview with Carson since his visit. Uh, I was told that um, he had a blast, that it went great. He just posted on his Twitter, some, some photos from the visit. Um, that, that was, that was sort of, I, I forgot how often we saw guys posting, visit photos on social media um that, that's been i don't want to say noticeably absent because it's you don't really think about it but that has been absent for for the last 14 and a half months so that was good to see that back on there several guys uh posting their photos from the south carolina visit and uh chris you know I, i'm i'm curious to see but there's gonna be some guys um day one at camp that uh, you know camp camp is always a combination for, for those of you who don't sort of haven't followed this before or have forgotten, it's always going to be a combination of maybe some big time guys that already have an offer, but just want to work out that the kids use this as a chance to work out with a staff as well uh, in a sense of, do I fit with how this coach coaches on the field? So you're going to have some, you know, you're going to have some guys that are big time prospects. Uh, then you're going to have some, some guys that are, maybe um, right on the fringe and that South Carolina is evaluating, trying to decide if they're going to offer. And then you're going to have guys that are just young underclassmen that probably, you know, maybe they're big time guys, but just aren't quite to that point on, on the recruiting radar yet. And then you, you also will have some kids who just want the opportunity to be able to go, you know, compete and be coached by a college staff. They're not going to actually be recruited athletes, but, um, it's a chance for them to get better as high school players. And it's a thrill for them to go to the, the indoor facility, a thrill to go to the practice field and, um, you know, have a chance to, to be out there with a, a major college uh, coaching staff. So, so guys fall in all these different categories, but if you look at, at June three, uh, which is tomorrow, day one, Chris, uh, there's some guys already on this list that, that I think, uh, and, and I think it'll grow too. There will be some, some kids that just pop up that we're like, okay, that, that's a guy. But um, I, I got to say, man, Dylan Lonergan, the quarterback, I'm pumped to watch him throw because I've, I've, seen, I've seen him throw on tape quite a bit. Top uh, football prospect. I think Rivals has the number 32 overall prospect in the country. He's also a top baseball prospect. This is going to be one of those kids um, who – that's going to affect his his football recruitment. Is our schools really willing to wait on to see what happens with, with baseball? You know, we'll find out. He's got a busy June, going to Alabama, I think, to throw. Going to Clemson, I think, to throw. Those are two schools that that if they, you know, firm up some offers there, are going to be firmly in the mix. If they don't, then other schools that are going to have a shot here. Um, this is this is a big visit for South Carolina uh, as far as setting the tone for if they're going to be in it with Dylan or not. And I, but I'm personally just excited to go watch the kid throw. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's a talented kid. Um, I mean, I'm intrigued by, by him too, by skill set. Always cool to see, you know, in camp, I think just in general, Wes, we can look back and think of some of the guys that we've seen in camp that have just really kind of put on a show. And sometimes it's not a guy you're expecting. Sometimes it is a guy you're expecting. You know, the one I always think of is, Remember me, Cole Hardman, back at the old Steve Spurrier showcase camps inside Williams Bryce, and you just knew that th this guy is going to be an absolute stud, and, and he was. And there's plenty of those examples, but you know, to see Lonergan, a guy that has big potential, obviously, uh, I think is going to be pretty neat. Expecting you know really good performance from from him, and be neat to watch him interact with the staff and to hear feedback on how it goes. But you're right, I, I think Wes, from my understanding. Carolina in the mix early. It, it is kind of early with him being a 2023 guy. You got the baseball angle, although my understanding is kid really loves football. Um, North Carolina, 
you know, is, is a factor. Uh, they just offered uh, Lonergan called North Carolina his dream school, actually. So that's something to consider. You got some other camp stops this summer that you mentioned in South Carolina who's been on them a while. So uh, and actually Lonergan's high school coach, former Gamecock uh, offensive lineman Philip Jones, and produced a ton of talent at that Brookwood school in the SEC and beyond. Lots of lots of college signees. And we've been by to see him uh, previously, Wes, uh, Coach Jones. So, yeah, that's one I'm certainly looking forward to and several other guys on this list that, I, that I'm going to be really interested to see. Speaking of Jones, uh, let's give a shout out to Jeremy Jones, our uh, listener here on, on YouTube or our watcher, I guess I should say. He says he's literally right down the road right now. Or he's literally at Clint Hammond's office. So, um, A, that means advertising works, Jeremy. You wouldn't have gone in there if you weren't watching the show, I'm going to say. And uh, tell, tell Clint we said what's up. And, uh, yeah, dude, Clint will take care of you. Go ahead. If you're trying to uh, buy a house or refinance, then uh, Clint's your guy, man. So, uh, yeah, tell him, tell him we said what's up. But, uh, and I, dude, I, I'll tell you the other thing. I'm, I'm going to be glad for us to get out there, maybe um, – just chat with people. There's always people hanging out around the camps. And um, also maybe with some in-person stuff, I might learn how to actually pronounce all these guys' names because I feel like we've been rolling with the on the, on the paper. Um, like on the screen, we've read it, but don't necessarily know. Um, and, and another guy coming in, another big-time quarterback, will be uh, Eli Holstein or Holstein. I always went with Holstein in my head, I'll have to admit. Okay, Eli Holstein, that's what we're going for. Um, Zachary, Louisiana, 6'3", 210 pounds, four-star, class of 2023. Just recently picked up an offer. I think that was about two weeks ago, Chris. Landed an offer from the Gamecocks, so another 2023. And, y'all, I think important to remember, quarterback recruiting, the cycle starts well before it does for, for everybody else. South Carolina has Braden Davis locked in. They have their guy for 2020. 2022 now you start to try to lock in on who do i want and who's interested for 2023 the the very first day of camp actually will go a long way for starting to sort all that out um because these two guys will be right alongside each other uh, throwing the football and, and eli uh, another kid that started to create some buzz um in recruiting circles and, and that i'm excited to to watch throw uh, so that's that's probably now unless there there may be other guys that pop up we don't know based on our expectations right now there's sort of the two big name quarterbacks that are expected to be there uh, to throw at, at South Carolina on Thursday a, an in state guy Chris I'm excited to see very interested Davin Jackson from Sumter um, defensive end prospect a kid that right now I believe is just being held up as far as recruiting goes because he doesn't necessarily have those exact perfect measurables. You know, he's listed 6'2", 240. But, man, I, I remember going by Sumter a year – no, a year and a half ago. And being told at the time, you know, yeah, we got – yeah, Justice Boone is a really, really good player. But this kid is our most productive player at the time on the defensive line. So, you know, I, I get the impression he wants a South Carolina offer. I get the impression he's a kid South Carolina could land. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm curious to see what type of showing he can put together. He's got some power five offers, he's got a solid offer list already. Can he add South Carolina to that offer list tomorrow? Yeah, that, that will be a key storyline. You know, several in-state guys that are camping – tomorrow or throughout the summer. And I think there's a few that you circle that say, you know, this kid might have a better chance than some of the other ones. There's some others that are kind of fringe or maybe they end up playing group of five, nothing wrong with that. But, you know, you just kind of assess the situation. And I think when you look at, you know, Davin Jackson, DJ Jackson, he's a guy that fits that, that mold that you're talking about, Wes, and that he's from a talent perspective, size perspective, depending on his performance, he may have a chance. South Carolina seems to like him as an edge guy in Clayton White's scheme. I know Mike Peterson's been, you know, recruiting him for a while. Interestingly, looked like for a while, Wes, he was going to move out of state, move to Georgia. Um, that did not end up happening. So back in Sumter, holding off on his recruitment. And, and I get the same sense as you is that South Carolina would be a, a significant offer for him. 
Gamecocks have also offered. We have not confirmed a, a camp date, a visit date for him, but Monteek Rames from the 2023 class in Sumter, a guy that I've personally heard may be the best even out of all those guys. You think about Justice Boone who signed with Florida in the 21 class, Jackson Rames in the 23 class. He's probably a guy to circle to, to watch for a camp performance or for a visit as well sometime this summer. Yeah, so that that'll be that'll be interesting to follow. We're always following who who's the guy that that has the big day and lands an offer, and and then in some cases go you know goes ahead and commits. Uh, Jacoby Henderson, a kid, another uh, kid from Fort Mill area, top of Ridge. Uh, Chris Lawson, uh, a guy that's I, I think going to be intriguing to watch from a South Carolina perspective. Twenty twenty three receiver, intriguing in that he is now back in the state of South Carolina. I, I think he actually was here earlier in his life and then moved to the Charlotte area is now back going to be at Ridgeview. He had an offer dating back to the previous staff and, uh, and now is right down the road to me. Anytime you got a guy with ties, you got a guy that's um, obviously going to be much closer to your campus. Now he'll be one for us to keep an eye on tomorrow. A guy I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Iman Smalls, the, the Beaufort South Carolina defensive tackle. He also had an offer from the previous staff, just a big, true nose tackle type, I would say, Chris. As uh, Craig said earlier, check out the arms on Iman Smalls. That that has to be, you know, we talk about great football names. It, that has to be the most um, backwards football <laughs> name. For, for Iman Smalls, yeah. Iman Smalls, I mean, this this kid is a, I mean, I, 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 we need to find out his weight room numbers. He's He just looks strong as an ox. Like, this dude... It is a beast. We saw him at, at Rivals Camp. It will be interesting to see him get out there. And and, and I think work with Jimmy Lindsay, son, I, some, I, I think uh, the thing about Iman Smalls is you were like, man, this kid, he's got some upside. He's got some ability. Um, just needs to use his hands a little bit better. You know, mm-hmm. so I think – but that's correctable. That's the type of thing that, um, you know, with time will, will come. So, uh, Daryl DePass, a, a teammate of his, cornerback will be there. Um Carmelo Overton, the outside linebacker, another 2023 kid from Carroll High School in Ozark, Alabama. And, um, you know, th- those are some of the guys that, that Chris and I will be paying attention to. A- anybody else uh, in there, Chris, that, that you want to focus on for a second or not? Well, well I was going to say, you know, Overton's a guy that I really like. I saw him in Rivals Camp in Atlanta, um, guy that South Carolina got in on early. So I'm curious to see, you know, how he looks in camp, what South Carolina, the feedback that he gets from South Carolina and, and an outstanding kid too, that I've had a chance to talk to several times and uh, really like his disposition as well as his game. Uh, another one, Wes, that I think is going to be interesting and, and correct me if this date has already been moved, but uh, Nate Branch is going to be in tomorrow, right? For Thursday's camp. I, I think yes. that's, And that's yeah. the guy that, you know, I think is really interesting. Uh, a lower Richland product, um, wide receiver, hasn't really, really hit the radar yet, but he uh, has done some training in the past with our guy Jason Barnes, formerly, uh, obviously, former Gamecock wide receiver, former Dutch Fork wide receiver coach who's helped produce a lot of talent. Um, a track guy who has some good tape from his time in high school. And so, I think Wes may be a guy that if he would have been playing at, say, a Dutch Fork or, I don't know, Sumter or somewhere like that, um, maybe he'd be drawing more attention. But Camp, I think for him, with being a 2023 guy, this is going to be a chance for him to sort of put his stamp on things and, and establish himself. And guy that I'm interested to see in that setting. You know, his film's good. He looks fast. He looks quick. How big is he? What does he look like in the camp setting? And I, and I think his recruitment could get interesting and kind of pick up how, how much it picks up? Does it rise to the level of a South Carolina or other Power Five programs? I don't know quite yet, but it, you get the sense that he might have that kind of ability. Yeah, this is a guy. You, you know, Chris. We go if you go to these little camps, not South Carolina camps, but other camps or seven on sevens. The kids know, you know, the the trainer types know. Like they they see these guys all the time, and Branch is one of those guys that just has in these little seven on seven circles has started to develop a, a name for himself. And as you said, it is not extended yet to like the online recruiting radar stuff, but I, I think it'll be pretty soon. I, I'll be curious to see how big is he exactly. Uh, I was told 
he recently ran a four four six on a day um, that was right after he had done the state championship in track, and uh, so he he's a guy that I, I'll be very curious to see what the forty is. I, I think he can break four four potentially, and then uh, you know you're you're probably definitely looking at, at having a chance at least to to land an offer there. So he'll be one to, to keep an eye on. But yeah, he he is coming Thursday. I was going off a list that wasn't quite updated. So, yeah, he'll he'll be in Thursday. So, I guess let's go ahead. Let's knock out thoughts on the first three days, Chris, because by the time we do another football show, that will all be over. And June 4th will not be a massive camp day necessarily, but it's going to be a massive day for South Carolina because mm-hmm. one of their top overall targets – regardless of position, Antonio Williams will make the short trek from right down the road, Irmo High School, Irmo, South Carolina. I keep doing that. Irmo slash Dutch Fork High. Big visit for South Carolina. We, we've we talked – we've probably spent as much time talking about him and probably Oscar Delp as, as like anybody on this show, I feel like, Chris. Yeah. But we've also – you know, and I, I had reported a while back, he's going to visit this school, this school, this school. Weren't really sure at the time – when the South Carolina visit was would be, and I was told it's going to either be right at the beginning or right at the end. Um, at the very beginning here for South Carolina, June 4th, they get Antonio Williams on campus. And this is a, this is a, a chance for them to sort of show him all the things they've been trying to tell him throughout the process so far. Yeah, in South Carolina, all indications we have are from just multiple sides, multiple people that we've talked to. Or that South Carolina has done a great job with this since the staff changed over of, of showing Antonio Williams and his camp, those being his family, all those around him, just showing love and, and building trust, building a relationship. And so, you know, it, it started with Shane Beamer up top, Justin Stepp, as soon as he was hired, was all over it. Eric Kimry, of course, a Dutch Fork alum, you know, still has ties at school, knows a lot of people in the community. Uh, all those guys have been in on Antonio Williams and making him feel like a priority, right. As a guy that's right down the road at a need position. And so South Carolina is poised. They seem to be in a pretty good spot, but again, we're saying this about a lot of guys and and it's not a cop out, but it kind of depends on on the summer, right. And how, how do things go? One story, one storyline we've been monitoring, do other schools offer? You know, we, we've discussed Alabama with them and Clemson, a couple schools that like them but haven't quite, you know, pulled that trigger yet, right, in terms of firming up an offer. Would that affect things? Um, maybe. It, it'd certainly be something to watch. Ole Miss, you know, has some family ties there. They appear to be in the mix. But, you know, South Carolina seems to have a good bit going for it. Um, that said, this is, this is a key visit. This is an important visit this week. Um, just like you said, to, to all these things that they've been talking about, um, the, the energy around the staff, the vibes, you can get a sense of that over the phone and over Zoom, but getting on campus um, is very important. That There's a reason why, I think I said, like I said this the other day, you go, there's a reason you when you go on vacation, like you just did, Wes, you didn't sit there and say, oh, I'll just look at pictures of the beach or I'll I'll, you know, talk to somebody on the phone or do a Zoom call with somebody at the beach. You actually go. You want to go somewhere on vacation. And so that's that's why these visits are so important to truly get a sense for for a place, to truly enjoy it, to sort of experience it. You have to actually go there. And that's why this is an important one for South Carolina and Antonio Williams. Shout out to Colin Taylor, by the way, who is apparently watching the show right now. And uh said for me to watch watch what I say about Irmo versus Dutch Fork. I, I was trying to say Irmo, South Carolina, slash Dutch Fork High School is what I was going for there. So, yeah, and uh, let, let's see. Uh, Curtis wants to know, who does Antonio Williams compare to size, skill, and potential? Good question. There, there's some Shia Smith there. Yeah, that's the I one think- we mentioned before. I mean, different, not the same guy. You know, there, every now and then there's a guy, even though I hate comparisons, where you're like, man, this guy's really like that guy. Uh, it's not like a dead-on type thing, but there's some similarities there. If you're kind of looking for play style and things like that, that's a decent comparison, I think. Yeah, and, you know, I think people are looking for a broad 
when I when I think of comparisons, you, you want it to be somebody everybody sort of knows and has watched, and um, but just gives you an idea. Is he, you know, is he is he like an Alshon Jeffrey style receiver, or is he a Debo style receiver? Is he a Shy Smith style receiver? Of the like the big South Carolina names that everybody knows, I think he's a he's much more of a Shy Smith than than probably any of those other you know recent South Carolina studs. So. Uh, a, a guy that, you know, I, I, Chris, tend to think he ends up in the slot um, at, at South Carolina or probably anywhere. Can play outside, don't get me wrong. You know, he can play play all over, I think, for you. But, um, you know, I, I think probably ends up in the slot. And like you said, dude, I, I think if, if nobody else offers, then, you know, this is probably a South Carolina Ole Miss battle. And I, I think we, you know, we kind of pegged that from the beginning. I, I think I – I think my read was that it would be South Carolina versus maybe Ole Miss or Tennessee just because I, I was sort – you know, you can put the pieces together. Whenever a school kind of has a little pipeline going, it, it sort of – you know, it, it gets guys on campus. If, you know, Dutch Fork has, has uh, you know, Hyatt there, you know, at Tennessee. And before that, they had Bryce Thompson at Tennessee. So – Kids want to. They want to go visit. They want. They visit and watch their their teammates play. It gets you in. So I thought maybe Tennessee would would be able to make a run here. It doesn't seem like they've come up as much. Yeah. Uh, you know. I, I think. I think Georgia is kind of in it. Auburn is in it. Uh, you know. They were. I know they've discussed possibly trying to get to Notre Dame. Possibly trying to get to Miami if. Uh, you know, if they can fit it into their schedule. But but right now among the offered, I think it's South Carolina and Ole Miss pretty clearly of the. Who do you need to watch if you're South Carolina? I think it's Clemson and it's Alabama. And uh, and right now, you know, it, it, let's sort of go into it, Chris. He was going to work out at Clemson. I think that was June 6th was that date. And now, from the looks of it, will not uh, work out. I think he's dealing with some some nagging stuff, um, you know, physically, and will not work out at Clemson, which is something where South Carolina. Um, you know, if, if Clemson were to offer, I think we've said this before, it doesn't mean he automatically goes to Clemson. If Alabama offers, it doesn't mean he automatically goes to, to Alabama based on what we've have heard, what we've been told. But it instantly puts that school in contention and yeah. that you have to deal with them if you're South Carolina. So right now, though, I think they're in solid shape, but they need for this visit, they need for June to go well for them. Because that Ole Miss trip, that's one to circle. That's one to keep an eye on from South Carolina's perspective as well. Because with Ole Miss, you have ties as far as his family goes. And you have the Lane Kiffin factor in that he's going to be able to point to, I do this, this, and this with, with wide receivers, and you can come in this offense and catch a bunch of balls. So th- there's a there's a, a nice little story for, for Kiffin and those guys to, to sell. Yeah, I mean, offensively, that's you, you kind of look at, Ole Miss and kind of how they're branding themselves and and even, you know, look at social media. There's a lot of talk about offense and Jeff Levy, their OC and Lane Kiffin, a couple bright minds um, on offense. And they put up some really big numbers, you know, with what they've done offensively there. So again, that's going to be appealing just like right now. And and Gamecock fans may not want to hear this, but an Alabama (laughs) offer at any position, you know, is appealing and same for Clemson and particularly a wide receiver where they've established a nice track record recently. So th- those schools are going to be a factor. That doesn't mean you have to go, okay, he's gone. If, if any, you know, you don't have to pull the he gone thing for anybody that gets an offer from a different school or considers another school. This is, you know, it could turn into, and it already is to a degree, but, but when you start recruiting with those guys, when you're having to go head to head with a Bama, Clemson, Georgia, those types of schools, that's into the big boy recruiting phase. And so it's not always for the faint of heart. It's not easy. And there's going to be some ups and downs, some ebbs and flows and things like that, even even on guys that you end up landing and you're not going to get them all. But here's a kid that, you know, has even right now, even without Alabama Clemson firmly in the mix, you got a kid who has some really good options from some intriguing schools, some appealing situations, appealing offenses, coaching staffs, places. Um, but South Carolina is squarely in contention for a hometown kid, and, and that's what you want. So, like you said, I, I'm, I'm totally with you. Uh, they, they've got to do a great job with this visit, and I really think that they will. I'm going to hit a couple of questions here real quick. Uh, USC Gamecock fan, uh, as far as baseball goes, we're we're going to try to have a full 
show on baseball that we're going to post um, not as a live deal, but just post as a video and audio on our podcast platform with Colin Taylor. So I'll defer any of the baseball stuff to that. It'll be way more in depth that way. Uh, Kyle wants to know if South Carolina has real traction with Jaleel Skinner. Kyle, that's not really a guy I would be tracking. Uh, not really someone that South Carolina that has done a whole lot with as far as targeting. And uh, Josh, uh, yeah, welcome in, man. I, uh, I, I'll, I'll follow back up with you, Josh. I, I got some thoughts on, on what we had talked about before. Um, just have been sidetracked a little bit, man. So I'll, I'll catch up with you there. But uh, let, let's go into, I guess it would be Saturday, uh, the June 5th will be the third camp day of the week, Chris, and uh, some so, uh, another day where there's some some young names on here that, that South Carolina has already offered, some guys that uh, certainly didn't have to come into camp. They already got offers, but uh, will we'll come in and, and compete. Uh, you know, I think one of the more intriguing ones that they've just offered is uh, Troy Ford Jr., a linebacker prospect that it sounds like Gamecock fans maybe need to remember. Yeah, Troy Ford, a linebacker out of the Savannah area, is definitely one to watch. He was really excited, you know, about the Gamecock offer. Ch- talked to, um, you know, the staff at the time, uh, sort of classified that offer when I spoke with him to follow up as a big one and, and almost immediately turned around and set a visit to the school. And uh, for the looks of it, not only a visit, but a camp work out west. So, um, you know, that that's certainly one to watch. You look at um, an in-state guy, also at linebacker, actually a couple in-state guys, um, or a few in-state linebackers, but a couple notable, I guess you could say, Zan Dunham out of Chester, who plays both ways uh, for his Chester High School team, someone that picked up an offer from the staff after Shane Beamer was hired, but they're going to get a good look at him. You know, I remember last time I talked to Dunham, kind of on the record, he was talking about how South Carolina wanted to, Clayton White, the defensive coordinator, linebackers coach, wanted to get a good look at him to kind of see how he could fit in. That's definitely a storyline to watch with him being an in-state kid. And, um, you know, so that's another one. And, and DQ again, uh, out of South Aikens, a guy that can play linebacker. And Nicholas M. and Worry, who's kind of a DB slash linebacker, kind of like Deuce Caldwell out of out of Malden West and that he, he's kind of can play DB, but may draw a look at linebacker at the next level for some schools. And a kid with size. So I'm, I'm kind of intrigued to see him. Just just a few of the guys there. It's really a, a pretty nice list, including a couple young guys on that day as well. Cam Pringle, the big offensive lineman from Woodland. Yeah, and he, you know, he's a guy that actually, I don't know if he's confirmed necessarily on, on one end of the thing, but had told us, had mentioned that day to us is when he was trying to get in. And um, Cam Pringle, we saw him in Atlanta, man. This y'all remember that name as an in-state kid. There, there are some really talented young offensive tackle prospects in the state coming up. You look at Josiah Thompson down the road at Dillon, already has a South Carolina offer, has a Kentucky offer as well. Um, but Cam Pringle, man, this dude looks the part. I mean, I you know, I, I think whenever you have a kid that he walks up to a camp that has the top players in the southeast at it and he's two, three years younger than some of them, and everybody goes, who is that dude? Like when he just walks up and everybody's like, who is that? Then that, that says something about your uh, what you what you have, your ability there physically as far as like looking at a guy off the hoof, uh, as they say. So um, still learning, I, I think, still growing uh, into the position, but already has near college size as a uh, – as a class of 2024 prospect and someone that I'll, I'll be interested to get out there and, and watch, but, but yes, yeah, and Dunham, as you mentioned, man, he's, he's another one that I, I think it will be intriguing to watch because like you said, he's sort of, you know, he's a two way guy. He's, he's going to be, if he goes to South Carolina anyway, he'll be making that transition to sort of full-time defensive player. And um, we'll be interested to see, uh, you know, him on, on that side of the ball out there. Yeah, it will be, um, you know, can't, can't Pringle to go back to him. I mean, it, it is, you do have to kind of remember that and watching him. He's so big that you're like, okay, this guy's, you know, a senior, you know, he's 2022 20, class or something and, and he's not. And so bearing that in mind, lots of upside there. Um, you know, Dunham, definitely an interesting storyline there because if, if, if things progress as they could, we don't know yet how they will, but that's a guy that you could certainly see being in South Carolina's class. Jaden Robinson and Amari Farrell, a couple guys out of Florida from the 2023 class that South Carolina is involved with. They're also going to be in, you know, working out in camp. 
you know, talking about 2024 in-state guys to go back to them. Trayvon Dunbar, Wes, um, out of Silver Bluff, is a guy that, uh, you know, people in that area absolutely rave about. Even last year, he put up huge numbers. Most games he only played a half and still put up just big numbers. And so I'm going to be interested to see him, you know, how he moves around in drills. Camp, not always the best setting for running backs, right, because you're not in pads. A lot of times you're just kind of running routes, doing drills, but still just to watch him move around, I'm going to be really interested to watch him. By the way, uh, for those who have not seen, Keyshawn Bryant just announced he will be returning to South Carolina um, and the men's basketball team next year. So good uh, good get there for Frank Martin and that group to keep him uh, on the roster. Obviously, that that helps. Every little bit helps if you're South Carolina trying to get that thing turned around. So if you have not seen that, that just uh, – that news just came out, I guess, on Twitter from Keyshawn. He announced it. Um, okay, man, that's uh, that's most of the guys. Should, should we talk a little bit about the, the visitor today as well, Chris? You want to get into that and reward the people who have stuck around? And then <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll probably get out of here. Uh, uh, I believe – I guess I don't know if we've confirmed if he made it in yet or if he's posted anything on the Twitters, but uh, Lawson Lucky, tight end, class of 2023 kid, and a uh, – a big time prospect in, in his own route, in his own right, and uh, it's someone that I think South Carolina is is going to be heavily involved in if they if they can remain that way. Yeah, um, you know he he's a guy twenty twenty three class. Obviously, you know you mentioned Oscar Delp earlier. He's going to be the the top priority far and away in the twenty twenty two class. But just looking ahead to twenty three, South Carolina's gotten a little bit of a head start with Lawson Lucky. You know he's six three, two twenty five or so. So when you look at him, he doesn't have you know, the, the, maybe the prototypical or what some people may think of the prototypical height, but he has, you know, a 79 inch wingspan. So this is a guy with really long arms and he can kind of play bigger than his listed size and someone that uh, South Carolina seems to really like. And again, you know, early involvement, getting him, getting him in on the second day, having him prioritized to, to make time to step on campus at South Carolina is certainly something that's, that's a positive. And, this new staff, they've talked a ton. Shane Beamer's talked a ton about emphasizing the tight end, especially this year, but even in the offense in the future. You know, he's got dedicated tight ends coach in Eric Camry. Shane Beamer's got a tight end background himself. Uh, we know that Marcus Satterfield has featured the tight end in, in spring football. And so um, it's an important position for this class and, and going forward as well. And Lawson Lucky's one of the, the better guys in the Southeast for sure in that 2023 class. Yeah, so if, if you're South Carolina, you've now guaranteed by having Lost and Lucky in today, you're going to make it through June 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And I believe there's already visitors set for June 6th, 7th, and 8th, potentially. You're going to make it through the first the first little bit of the, the month, easily hitting your sort of tongue-in-cheek goal of having prospects on campus every single day. So a uh, good start for them. We'll see if they can start to build this momentum, Chris, start to maybe land a commit here or there, start to build a little bit of an edge there as far as getting some guys, getting more guys into the class. And I'm still curious, uh, you know, we'll, we'll sort of as this goes on each week, we'll talk about which guys are expected in on that particular week, what it means, what we thought about some guys we saw the previous week in person and, and sort of go from there. Braden Davis uh, obviously will be on campus at some point and, Next weekend, so not this week, not this weekend, but next weekend is when you'll start to see, uh, you know, those big official visit weekends where South Carolina is going to have. That's where your 2022s will be involved. You know, they'll they'll be 2022s at camp, but it seems like a lot of your bigger time prospects for camp, are, in a lot of cases, are going to be some of these 2023s that are in and um, trying to get out and, and get some work in. So that'll be fun. And the the reason, Chris, I would encourage everybody to come to GamecockCentral.com. And, and check it out, is that we can preview all we want. We can give you a list of expected visitors all you want. But every single year and almost every single day, there will be a guy or two at camp that just pops up, um, whether it's a big-name guy that um, we just didn't – nobody really knew was going to be there. It's a last-minute thing. Or an unknown that just has a huge day. So – that would be my biggest uh, case. If I was going to make a case for why you should be on GamecockCentral.com the next three days, um, it would be to, to track that in, in real time as we, uh, 
as we, uh, I would say, cover them front to back, uh, early morning to late afternoon on Gamecock Central. Yeah, I mean, we'll have we'll have scouting notes, we'll have follow ups with these guys, we'll have new offer scoop, and it's it's always fun, and it's always a uh, you know, I think pretty interesting content and a pretty interesting time, and it seems to be pretty popular with our subscribers too. So come check it out in real time and get access to all our content, ask us questions about it whenever you want. And yeah, it is always fun. I mean, we, we've seen guys, four stars lose offers off of camp. I think you men mentioned that uh, in the past, that example, we've seen guys who nobody really knew or were even going to be there, get offers in camp and then end up playing eventually for the Gamecocks. So always a, a really pretty, a pretty cool time at camp, just a lot to go on, going on and a lot to observe. Yeah, no doubt, man. Uh, you you got anything else at all, Chris? I, I mean, I think no, man. Let's let's get to it and and create some more content on Gamecock Central for the people. Yeah, appreciate everybody joining us. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, this has been GC Live of, again. YouTube.com slash Gamecock Central. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter, and we're on all the major podcast platforms. Please uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the rate review, and uh, all the other buttons on there. He's Chris. I'm Wes. We'll see you all very very soon.